I still can't believe what happened. I mean, I know it happened. I saw it. But my brain just wants to write it off as a bad dream or something. I grew up in a small town in upstate New York, a place where everyone knows everyone. Quiet, peaceful. Figured I'd live my whole life without seeing anything out of the ordinary. Boy, was I wrong. I was always a night owl, even as a kid. Something about the stillness of the night drew me in. I'd often sneak out of my room to sit on the porch swing, watching the world sleep. One summer night, when I was about 16, something happened that I still can't explain. It was a clear night, the kind where the stars seemed to shine brighter. I was lost in thought, rocking gently on the swing, when I heard a noise. It was a low growl, deep and guttural, coming from the woods behind our house. I froze, every hair on the back of my neck standing on end. Curiosity, stupid teenage curiosity, got the better of me. I crept to the edge of the porch and peered into the darkness. My eyes adjusted slowly, and then I saw it. It was standing on its hind legs, towering over the trees. Its body was covered in thick, dark fur, and its eyes glowed an eerie yellow in the dim light. I'd seen coyotes before, but this was different. It was bigger, stronger looking, and those eyes, they were inhuman. I backed away slowly, heart pounding in my chest. The creature let out another growl, and I could hear the snap of twigs as it moved closer. For a moment, I couldn't breathe. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. It couldn't be real, could it? But there it was, this massive creature. I blinked hard, hoping it would disappear. But when I opened my eyes, it was still there. The creature's head turned slowly, scanning the tree line. I ducked down behind the porch railing, my heart pounding so loudly I was sure it would hear me. As I crouched there, barely daring to breathe, I heard another sound. It was different from the growl, a series of low, rhythmic clicks. They seemed to be coming from the same direction as the creature. Against my better judgment, I raised my head just enough to peek over the railing again. What I saw next made my eyes pop out of my head. The creature was no longer alone. Several smaller figures had emerged from the woods, surrounding it. They were humanoid in shape, but didn't move like humans at all. The clicking sounds intensified, and I realized they were coming from these smaller beings. It was as if they were communicating with each other, and with the larger creature. I wanted to run inside, to wake my parents to do something, but I was paralyzed with fear and disbelief. All I could do was watch as this impossible scene unfolded before me. Suddenly, a beam of light appeared from above, illuminating the clearing where the being stood. It seemed to shimmer and pulse with an otherworldly energy. As the light grew brighter, the creatures began to move. The smaller ones circled around the larger beast, their movements becoming more frenzied. The clicking sounds reached a fever pitch, drowning out even the sound of my own racing heartbeat. Then, in a flash so bright it left spots dancing in my vision, they were gone. All of them. The woods were plunged back into darkness, leaving me to question my sanity. I was unable to process what had just happened and sat there for the rest of the night. When the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, I finally found the strength to stand on shaky legs and make my way back to my room. I never told anyone what I saw that night. I was too scared to talk about it, even with my mom. But I knew, deep down, that something extraordinary had occurred, but I would just have to figure out a way to deal with it. To this day, I still think about what happened, but it's in the distant past now. Have any of you seen anything like this? At this point in my life, I'd like to know more. I grew up in Martinsburg, West Virginia, which is really close to the border between West Virginia and Maryland. As a child, my dad took all of us kids, boy or girl, over to the wildlife preserve in Berkeley Springs to go hunting during hunting season. 
It was a 15-minute drive from our house, which was convenient, but the preserve itself was gigantic. And back then, it wasn't even close to as fenced off as it is today. Dad hunted for all sorts of creatures back in 79, when there weren't many regulations to follow. We could go after whatever we wanted, whenever, and it didn't matter how old we were. Usually my dad would get some deer and turkey, saving the meat for future meals. But on this trip, he was looking for bobcats to trade some fur in the area. As he always did, he got us up from our beds at about 5 a.m., handed us all some buttered toast and a glass of orange juice, and we were on our way, all five of us. Mom got to stay home with the new baby. The two kids under 13 didn't handle guns, so they stuck to dad while he hunted. They just learned from him as we all did. We three teenagers had rifles and sent on our way. We knew the area like the back of our hands. We just wandered off in different directions, all looking for bobcats. Dad said that he could get some good money for the furs, and since the holiday season was around the corner, we were itching to find as many as we could. I wandered south, away from everyone in my family. I was the middle child of the five on the trip. I was 13 and not the biggest hunting buff, but I still was willing to do whatever my dad told me. I was definitely the odd one out when it came to our very American heritage, but my family didn't bully me about it, and I could have said no if I didn't really want to go. I had only been allowed to handle the rifle once before, but I knew how to handle it. I wanted to see if I could be like everyone else. I figured if I went in the opposite direction of everyone, the more bobcats there would be for me to hunt and grab. I passed a pond and a few other clearings, but then would be back in the thick of the woods. It was still early morning, about 7 a.m., when I finally came upon what sounded like an animal stirring in the bushes on a small rock path above my head. I hid myself against the rock to give the animal a chance to walk its way down to my level. After a few seconds, nothing. I was confused because I knew I heard something coming and there was only one direction it could come from. I thought I should take a look and see if I could shoot it quick from the level where I was standing. As I peeled away from the wall, I looked up and came face to face with what appeared at first to be a dog. The eyes, though, and some of the features were almost human. His head was the size of two of mine stacked next to each other. I was so stunned I couldn't even scream. I just dropped my rifle, the gun going off as it hit the ground. This pissed the beast off because suddenly he began to sneer at me. He stood up on the edge of the rock to reveal how massive he was at least seven or eight feet tall with claws that could rip me in half. His fur was black and matted like he hadn't bathed in months. His eyes never left me as he began to make his way down the rock to the forest floor. Even his feet were massive. I could hear his footsteps crashing into the ground. I began to hyperventilate. This was no wolf, I thought. This was almost werewolf-like, but it was a sunny morning, not a full moon. I could see him clear as day as he made his way around to me. As he got within a few feet me, I was unable to contain my fear any longer. I was only a kid at the time. That's when I heard another bit of movement from the path I came from, followed by a familiar voice. It was my oldest brother. Before my brother was able to approach and see us both standing there, the creature looked in his direction and then took off, climbing up a tree and out of sight. It happened so fast, but it felt like I had been standing there for years. I was shaking, still staring up at the tree as my brother came over to me. He had to snap me out of it, grabbing my shoulders and saying my name over and over. He had heard the gun go off and knew one of us had to be there. He wanted to see if we had caught something. He looked at my face, which was stained with tears. I didn't even know I had cried. I couldn't speak. He guided me back to the main area where the truck was parked and stayed with me until everyone else got back. When my dad saw me, he said it looked like I had seen a ghost. I told him I did. I never went hunting with them again, and no one ever mentioned seeing what I saw on any of their future trips. Luckily, dad just chalked it up to hunting not being something I was meant to do. But really, that creature was so angry, I was afraid if it ever saw anyone with a rifle again, it would eat them whole. 
that experience completely reshaped my life. I'm the only one of my siblings that left West Virginia and moved to the city. I saw something recently that I found pretty horrific. I hope you don't mind me writing into you to tell my story. It's the only way I can be safe when I report what I saw. Once this is out in the open, I know no one can come after me. My friend and I have a client in our landscaping business who's pretty high up on the totem pole. He has a high profile job and a lot of rich friends. This story isn't about him though, he's actually pretty cool. He doesn't act like he's better than anyone just because he drives a fancy car and has a lot of money. We did a pretty extensive job for him over the summer. He's got acres of land and had a swimming pool put in. Then he hired our company to completely enclose it with shrubs and trees. It took us most of the summer to complete. He was very specific in what he wanted, but we were glad of such a big job. He's a great client. Gave us a huge tip, too. Then he invited us to a party his friend was having on Labor Day. He said the guy was a really well-known photographer and had a huge house out in the middle of nowhere. Told us there would be lots of cool people there and free booze and other stuff, too. Neither one of us had any big plans for the weekend, so we were like, sure, why not? It seemed like it would be a really fun way to officially end the summer season. Boy, was I wrong. Now I'm having nightmares about what happened and I wish I'd never gone to the damn thing. When we got there, we were both really wowed by the size of the guy's estate. He had these fancy wrought iron gates at the end of a long driveway. And it was my first time having to use an intercom to announce ourselves so the gates would open. It felt like something out of a movie. We parked my buddy's 2000 Honda CRV in the middle of a bunch of snazzy sports cars and took a few minutes to admire the fancy rides. I took a few pics with my phone to show my dad. I knew he'd be impressed I'd be rubbing elbows with these folks. I was afraid we'd stand out like a couple of sore thumbs and things would be awkward. But once we got up to the house, which was packed, everyone was really cool and friendly and made us feel welcome. It was a hell of a party. Top shelf booze, lots of model chicks, a live band playing, and a table of other recreational enhancements, if you know what I mean. My buddy and I don't touch that stuff, but it was still mind-boggling to see how much dough this guy was throwing away to keep his guests in high spirits. Everything was going well until we were chatting with the party host's younger brother, a guy in his late 20s. He was all about, let me show you this, and check out my brother's collection of type of stuff, kind of showing off. He says to me, out of the blue, Hey, you believe in Bigfoot? I'm thinking it was the opening to a joke, so I just laughed and said, I don't know, should I? He said, no, I'm serious. You know, a lot of people say it's not real. Do you believe it's real or not? I shook my head and said, probably not. And my buddy chimed in saying, absolutely not, urban legend. The guy gets this funny look on his face and says, I bet you a hundred I can change your mind. I didn't know what to think but I wasn't about to bet a hundred bucks on anything. I just shook my head and smiled. My buddy said, I'll bet you 20. That's all I got on me. The guy just grins and says, it's a deal, follow me. He turns and heads through the house, winding through all the people. My pal just looks at me and shrugs and follows the dude. So I went too. This house was huge, man. I don't know, maybe 8,000 square feet? Just a guess. So we walk for a minute and finally get away from the crowd and come to this locked door. The guy has a key, and when he opens it, I can see its steps leading down to a basement. The smell coming up from the basement was gross. It smelled like a zoo. I must have shown on my face what I was thinking, because the guy laughed and said, Oh, it's not that bad. Come on, you'll see. It's worth it. Just breathe through your mouth. I looked at my friend like, What have you gotten us into? He shrugged and followed the guy down the stairs, with me right behind him. As soon as we got down there, I saw what made it smell so bad. This guy was keeping a bunch of exotic animals in cages in his basement. He had a white Siberian tiger, a bunch of really big snakes, and something I didn't really recognize for sure, I think was one of those sloth things. 
I felt really bad for the tiger. It had a chain around its neck even though it was in a cage and it looked miserable. It didn't even move when we walked by, like it had gone somewhere else in its head to escape. But all my thoughts about that poor animal flew right out of my head when I saw what was in the last cage. It was pretty small, like it was a young one, but I swear to God this thing looked like Bigfoot from the movies. It was in a cage, but just like the tiger, it had a chain around its neck too, and it was afraid. When it saw the guy, it kind of cowered back. It was covered completely in fur except for its face and hands and feet. It had a prominent brow ridge like a caveman, but it had human eyes. It was freaky as hell, but I had to feel bad for it. The cage was filthy, and the thing was terrified. So what do you say now? The guy said with this big grin on his face. I was speechless. My buddy said, holy shit, where did it come from? He pulled out his money and paid the guy. The guy got really cagey about where, just said his brother has connections all over the globe, and he paid a really high price for it. I was feeling kind of sick from the smell, and I guess I looked green, because the guy says we should go back upstairs. When we got to the staircase, he turned around and warned us. You can't tell anyone about this. If word gets out, I'll know it was you guys, and my brother knows how to make people just disappear. He was deadly serious, I could tell. That party was back at the beginning of September, and I haven't told anyone until now. I just feel like the conditions the thing was being kept in was inhumane. It's really bothering me. I've decided I'm going to go to the authorities. I'll tell them where the house is. Maybe you guys will see this story in the news soon. Who knows? I hope telling this story here will protect me from any retribution. The more people that share this story, the more my mind will be set at ease. They can't stop all of us, right? Thanks for your help. I know this is the kind of place to share this. No one really believes me, they listen, but I know they don't really believe anything I'm about to say. Anyway, I went to see family in Phoenix. I go every few months. No one likes that I live in Chicago. You know how it can be with family. If you're not living 10 minutes away, the sky is going to fall. All hell will break loose. You know how it is. I get with my cousins. We're hanging out with a few of their friends and they want to go outside the city to a park with a big rock in the shape of a ring. I'm down, that seems okay. They say we might even see a rattlesnake or desert hare or something. I could see some animals in the wild, why not? We grab some beers and jump in my cousin's Jeep, and they go into a pickup and we go. It was almost dark, like the sun was just ready to disappear. We get there. It didn't take too long, I don't know, maybe. 20 minutes max. There were a few other cars. Not too many. I guess most people were leaving because it was getting dark. I don't know. Anyway, we park next to a little lake or pond, whatever, open some beers and start throwing rocks, skipping them across the water. It was weird though. Someone across the parking lot was fighting with their dog. He was going nuts and the owners were trying to pull him into their car. He was whining and barking and thrashing around in their arms. I've never seen a dog do that before. We just kind of watched, and the owners seemed embarrassed. We should have paid more attention to that dog. We really should have. So we start walking around and goofing around. You know how people are with their family and friends. One guy was looking for snakes. My cousin said to watch out for killer bees. Apparently they are an issue now in AZ, and people keep running into them. I was nursing a beer, as I'm not really a big drinker, never have been. It was hot though, and I'm not used to the heat anymore. You get used to your new surroundings. Chicago, even in the summer, is nowhere near Arizona heat. Anyway, we all walked around the park. I started to help look for snakes, overturning rocks, rattling through some of the tall grasses with a stick. I've never actually seen a rattlesnake outside of the zoo. I've heard them while walking. They rattle to scare you away, but I've never actually seen one. My cousin and his friends convinced me it would be cool to see. I guess I felt braver with a stick in my hand. Sounds kind of corny now, though. We didn't find any snakes. We saw some birds, and someone yelled about a lizard that they found on a rock. 
We were just laughing, talking, telling stories. My cousin's friends asked me about Chicago and what living there was like, you know, normal stuff. They had spent pretty much their entire lives in Arizona and had never gone to far north or east. It is kind of a different world, I suppose. I didn't think anything I was saying was interesting, but they seemed to want to know. That's when we heard the noises. Weird whining at first, then a howling. Someone said it was coyotes, so we began to walk around looking for them. They apparently have no fear of humans anymore, I guess. We climbed up some rocks and looked around. We couldn't really see anything, and it was getting darker. My cousin said that sometimes sound is weird in the desert, and maybe they were farther away. We heard the noise again, and a kind of yipping noise, but it sounded like there was more than one now. It sounded closer, too. I didn't see anything until my foot slipped when I tried to get higher up on the rocks. At first, it was just a shadow out of the corner of my eye, and then I saw a tail, and it looked like it could be a coyote. I ran down to some rocks that were right below me, and I stood really still and quiet. I've seen coyote before from far away, never up close, and I knew they didn't really fear people anymore. They'll run right past you, or go into your garbage and rummage around for food. I've even heard people say they'll come to your front door looking for food if they're really brave. Everybody seemed to just stop and look around them. Nobody even whispered to each other. We kept hearing things moving, brushing past rocks. It was pretty eerie, hearing things moving around you, but not being able to see them or really tell in what direction they were moving. I turned to my cousin and they just mouthed that they were freaked out. I just smiled and turned back, looking left and right, trying to pin down what was moving around us. I thought it ran behind some of the rocks down maybe 10 or 15 feet below me, but something stood up, like a person, and its eyes flashed like a dog's or cat's when they catch the light, and I heard the yipping again right next to me. I turned, then turned back, and saw a coyote running off. My cousin saw it too. We were incredibly freaked out, and no one believes us. I haven't been back to that park. It's actually been a bit since I've been back to Phoenix. My cousin doesn't even tell the story anymore. No one believes us. They just think we're making it up for attention. My mom said it was the time that the light and dark were playing tricks on us. I know what I saw though, it's weird. And I've read that other people have had similar experiences out in the desert or the woods. It's just one of those weird tales, I guess, that happens to people. I don't know.